Hello there once again, this is Tim McCullum from Fermion. Today we're going to be creating a Python application that uses an SQLite relational database. So we use the spin new command passing in the minus T for template. So we're using the HTTP hyphen PY template. And once we fill out the name and description, that template scaffolds out the application for us, as we can see here. Now the one tweak that we're going to do uh, in relation to the database is we're going to add a line at this component level here and we're going to add this SQLite underscore databases entry and use the value of default. Running the spin cloud SQLite create command we create a database called calendar hyphen database and we'll quickly go ahead and do a spin build here. Now to create the tables for the databases we can generate a file um, so we paste in this SQL syntax here which is creating tables for users and events and what we do is we save that to the migration.sql file on local disk. We then run the spin up command and we actually pass in that migration.sql file so that executes the SQL, but if we look at the output of the application, it's still just the hello world from Python SDK. And this is because we haven't touched the source code yet. So if we go to the app.py file, we'll see that this boilerplate uh, hello from Python SDK is there. And what we'll do is we're going to switch that out for some um, SQLite execution code and this is just basically doing a, a select all so when we do a spin build up now with that new code we'll see that the application will return an empty set of data because we haven't put any data in the tables yet so the tables have been created the database exists but there's no actual um, data in there so um, we create a new file called populate the calendar.sql and in this file we can create SQL syntax to insert information into the database tables. So we save that on disk once again and we do the spin up and we pass in the populate calendar SQL file and now if we return we'll see that there is that row that was saved in the populate file. So we have one entry in the database and we're running this on localhost at the moment. Now if we want to make this a bit more interesting we can change the logic uh, in the Python file and what we're doing here is we're creating a RESTful API. So we have POST request that can come in and we're executing the SQL now inside the Python source code and similarly with this GET uh, we're allowing the uh, client that's calling, that's making the request to get the information uh, passed back as a response and the response is rows from the database. Now we do have to make one quick adjustment in the applications manifest. So we are going to replace this original uh, default route which is just a wildcard. Um, we're actually going to put in an endpoint called events. So for this RESTful API we're going to use the events endpoint. So we spin build up with that new config and source code. And now we see that we can go ahead and make requests to the localhost forward slash events. So you see here we have a uh, request using the post verb and it's aimed at the events endpoint and we're passing in a JSON object which is gonna populate the uh, database table and as you can see there it returns the row from the table And if we do a uh, request using the get verb, or we hit that in our browser, we can see that the information is returned from the database. So it's passing back a valid JSON object. Now the next step, we can spin deploy. So by running spin deploy, we're now creating an application in Fermion Cloud using the same configuration and uh, source code. So nothing extra to do. It's asking us here, would you like to link to an existing database or create a new one? So we're going to create a new database and link the app to it. Now remember, we're talking cloud now, not localhost. So it's created a new database called Lively Giraffe and we accept that. 
it'll go ahead and deploy the application on Fermion Cloud. Now, if we do a spin cloud SQLite list, we will see here that this database, Lively Giraffe, is associated with the public facing application and using the label default. So that's all correct. Now we've got a new endpoint, right? So this is the Fermion Cloud endpoint, and the forward slash events is still the RESTful API endpoint. Now, if we go to that, we will see here that we don't have any tables. So we've created the database, but it doesn't have tables. And that's fine because we don't want our production data to be uh, the same as our development and testing environment. So what we do is we, using that migration file that we've already got, we run that against the SpinCloud SQLite execute, and we pass in the database name and the migration file. And what that'll do is create those tables for us. Now, if we do a request with a get verb, it'll show that the tables are empty, which is also correct because we haven't had any interactions from users yet in our production environment. So we can go ahead and uh, simulate some requests made by you know, a client web application or by users. So requests, let's do a post verb, um, which will pass in a JSON object again, and we're sending that to the cloud endpoint and as you can see there we now have some uh, information in that events table we do that again add in a second object with a unique email address so this is another person with another event and once that executes we can see that there's now two so the endpoint is events slash two or events slash one to uh, retrieve the information from the SQLite database. So that's all done using uh, Python source code. Configuration was very minimalistic, just a couple of lines of config, a couple of commands to deploy that to localhost and to the cloud. Now the documentation for this, if you go to developer.fermion.com in the cloud section here, you'll see the tutorials and there is a SQLite database tutorial page. So on this page you'll see some uh, familiar pieces of configuration that we've used in the video. Please feel free to uh, visit us on Discord. Uh, you can go to fermion.com for links to our GitHub and Discord and other things. I think it's pretty exciting to be able to build a WebAssembly powered web application uh, using Python. So thanks very much for watching. See you next time.